said, no, 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 it was supposed to be my pants I killed, what did you do to me? I killed, I know, one, two, three, four champions I can't believe it's wrong
Radio.
pones triste, destruiremos a una vieja gorda. could do some damage so i guess people just don't want to deal with that bad rider life still from the side of evil corporation um ikea well everyone lo lo pretty much loves running life still and bad rider is also something they do i believe they also run it in the mid lane once in a while so uh they definitely do have the opportunity to pick it up if they want to sand king jug will be the first opening from the side of ikea and Keeper of the Light Clockwork from Evil Corporation is, again, this is something they like to do. They like to pick up the Coddle and they pretty much always, if they can get away with it, will go for that dual lane setup um, in the early stages of the picks. You know, get get your off lane, or wh whether it's a Slaughter, Clockwork, um, you name it, like, it doesn't matter what it is. You get that hero and you get a Keeper of the Light as a secondary su as support, you know, they, they, they run it in a, in a very, very similar way every single time. Max Illuminate and then just like put a lot of pressure on the safe lane where you just get a lot of farm and you push them you push them into that tower so they can't really make any fancy rotations. Um, that's, that's something that Evil Corporation, they, they do every single time they get, get away with it. Enigma gets banned out by Ikea, also I hear that Evil Corporation have picked up here and there. Silence at DK from the side of Evil Corporation will be banned out. So no team fight E, power power allowed with a silence of ban and DK is a very tanky mid laner, nothing you want to deal with and well Hmm Yeah well there's nothing too much to say about that ban honestly. I mean IKEA have picked it up sometimes I believe, but uh it's a DK ban. Um, it's a good mid laner though, you know, you get a lot of pushing power with it. It fits well with the jug in the way that you have one, 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 like you have two cores where one of them is like super tanky um, and does a lot of sieging damage and the other one is just, you know, your, your very standard, not the most survivable hero, but it does a lot of damage and uh, has a lot of sustain with the healing ward, obviously. Luna will be banned out by the side of Ikea and yeah, Magnus from the side of Evil Corporation. So Boxy will get his little Magnus in the mid lane. And already we can see that there's a lot of opportunities for that um, combo with the Magnus, as in, you know, your safe lane that has the empower value. In most cases, they would be picking up the Weaver because they, they very much love picking that one up. But in a case like this, you have so many options, like the direct counter, counter to the Jug would be something like an Ursa. It would be kiteable by the Sand King and the Rubik, though. Um, so we'll see. Hmm, Sven is an option as well. You have anti mage, you have PA. There's a lot of right clickers left in the pool. Um, they don't even have to pick up one just yet because there's so many there's so many options left. Usually you pick up Magnus early, then a lot of the heroes will be banned out. But they, they have some freedom now on the side of Evil Corporation if they want to just uh, save save that uh, final pickup for last. 
and Ikea, well, Rubik, um, good steals, Hookshot, Cox, RP, um, even in stealing the Impala, so you, because you already, you have the Juggernaut yourself, which is like the old school best combo with the Magnus, like you would all, you would all see in the past, you know, Magnus plus Juggernaut being picked up RP into a, into an Omni Slash with like insane value because of the Impala, and, uh, well, just, you know, lots of damage. And let's see what else. So, hmm. Hmm. Evil Corporation, Keep of the Light as well. Well, also strong steals. Very, very strong steals. Um, considering the way they play the Coddle, it will be like uh, you will only have Illuminate and Chakra available until you use your ultimate. So either way, it's uh, I'm pretty sure that's, that's a valuable steal from the side of the Rubik. Like stealing the Illuminate Blast, that's an insane amount of burst damage. If you imagine, you know, you lift, then you charge up your Illuminate Omni and Fade Ball on top of that, that's like a good six, 700 magical damage you shoot onto one target. So the Rubik suddenly becomes very, very scary. All right, Omni Knight gets picked up, up by the side of Evil Cop. That will be their secondary support hero. Um, interesting. I don't mind it though. I like it. Um, it's like one of those heroes. It's, it's an enabler more than anything else. So um, now that now it's like okay, your safe link carry whatever that may be doesn't have to worry about anything too much. Um, if we, if for example they pick up a PA or a Sven, then normally the issue is that they can be controlled fairly easily by heroes like the Sanking and Rubik. But if the repellers is, is used properly, then that that kind of gets taken away. So um, everything from from like Morphling to Ursa to PA to Sven, like all of these heroes suddenly look a lot more fancy just because you you have. You have a lot of a lot of farming power with the empower a lot of damage with that and well with the repel it means that you don't really have to worry too much about uh, being taken down by like a blink epicenter sand key for example <clears throat> it's a very greedy support hero but that doesn't really matter too much because they are looking for those dual lanes and uh, they have the keep of the light with the clockwork in the lane so as long as these two heroes can keep um the rubik and whatever other support may arrive from ikea in that lane then having an omni knight solo support with your safe lane carry doesn't really matter too much you, you just need levels on omni knight and whenever you have a 2-1-2 lane you can get away with a greedy support because you know obviously you don't have a tri lane so you don't have to share the experience as much where the omni knight will get a little bit more than otherwise Ricky. All right, Ricky gets picked up by Ikea. Hmm. Hmm. That's an interesting pickup. Interesting pickup. Um. Well, it's a roaming hero. Like, actually, in the start of this patch, that was probably the, the thing that got banned out the most. Everyone wanted to ban out both the Bounty Hunter as well as the Ricky. Um, just because it makes sense, you know, you can go around, you can steal runes, you can be annoying, give a lot of vision, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but normally when we see Ricky being picked up, it, it combos with something, like you have a, a Darkseid with it, for example. But in this game, you don't really have too much of a setup. Um, obviously, you know, Sand King plus Ricky, I don't really see the super heavy value in that kind of dual lane. Um, you can't really pressure the mid that much either. It's it's a Magnus. It's not the easiest here in the world to zone out, and in most cases, you will be able to skew yourself to safety. So, I'll I'll we will have to see what this Ricky does. Like so far, I don't really see it being that valuable. But maybe the last pick for the mid laner will change. Unless well, they could also pick up a safe lane like Juck in the mid lane. Okay, Queen of Pain. <laughs> so what this tells me is pretty much that they want to try and secure the mid lane. 
Um, so most likely the rookie will be spending a lot of time trying to shut down Box in the mid lane with the Queen of Pain. Should be doable. Queen of Pain is a very, very annoying hero. And if you get like Shadow Strike level 2 or level 3 and then you have the Ricky with a smoke screen on you, it may actually be possible to kill the Magnus. So that, that that's something that they are most likely aiming for. And Evil Corporation, they will finish up that draft with an anti-mage as... Hmm, it makes sense. Um, like I said, you could pick up the Sven, you could pick up... Um, heroes like the PA as well, but the way you see this draft right now is okay. Um, uh, yeah, well, it's pretty much just you know get get the better carry honestly. Um, Anti mage, well, decent against Sanking and Queen of Pain. When you look at IKEA's draft, like when when you think about the damage coming out, it's the Queen of Pain, Sonic Wave, uh, Ultimate, obviously the Epicenter, and then the Juggernaut's Omni Slash, where. Antimage is good against both of those things. He doesn't deal too well with the Sonic Wave, but everything else he he, he can deal with with his own uh, skill set with the Spell Shield and whatnot. Obviously, since the change to uh, to like you can't level up stats anymore, then it's much more common to see the Antimage have extra levels in Spell Shield. So you know, fifty percent magic resistance is quite a lot against that Sand King. The Sand King will not be able to do too much damage. It's good in the lane. You can take away his mana, so he doesn't have Barrow Strike available. And you can see Itagaga. He's already setting himself up to be able to jungle a little bit in case that is necessary. Um, the Omni Knight will also make uh, the Ant Mage a hero that can fight earlier than normally. Like you have Empower, you have Repel. So if you see something like a Vanguard Rush coming out on the Ant Mage, he could actually do a lot of fighting early game as well um, at the same time as the Jug. So I like it. I feel like uh, it's a greedy pickup obviously, but it, it's, it's in a game where you can get away with it. Um, the Ricky is not that powerful a support here either, like it, you don't really have supports that can punish that well inside of Ikea. Um, Rubik can make some decent rotations, Ricky can pressure the mid lane, but I don't think this is a support duo that is necessarily going to shut down the anti-mage. The smoke screen is going to be a beautiful setup when they want to kill the anti-mage just to silence him, but it's a, it's definitely not not a situation where you, you, you are worried about your safe lane. You just need to make sure that Boxy doesn't die in the middle lane. And uh, for that purpose, we have Mr. Chairwoolly. So, you know, he already got a TP available. And that is something you have to do. Like, uh, he definitely needs a helping hand in the mid lane. They will try and focus on killing him and shutting him down. Um, when he's one-on-one -on -one with the Queen of Pain, he should be able to do fine. You know, Empower means that he does a lot more right-click damage than the Queen of Pain can, uh, can handle. But, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We will see. As Ikea, you know, both teams just uh, changing rooms, nothing fancy happening with Ghost Death Star, just trading a couple of hits with, uh, with Book. Looks like the first thing they're looking for is just to j just jump in the top lane with the Ricky. Makes sense as well. They know that they that both the Cardinal as well as the Clockwork is up here. And if you can, you know, lift into spin into the Ricky, just hitting the key with the light, that is a very easy kill. It's a one armor hero, so it does take a lot of time to do with the Clockwork. Going for some cards, just trying to keep people away. You can see the record damage is already doing so much work against the key with the light. You need to be careful. He is. It's it's a hero that can do a lot of work in the lane if you if you kind of contest him, but if you can get a jump on him, this is not a not a hard hero to kill. It's a very very easy hero to bring down. So we'll see. I'll just charge up some illuminate blasts, you know, push down the lane a little bit. We do have the clockwork being harassed a little bit by Steph Stall as well. So so far it's being a little bit annoying, but like I said early in the draft, like you know, if if the keep of the light and the clockwork can keep the two supports in this lane, they will be happy with it, even if they may not get the most amount of blasts, as you can see the Juggernaut, uh, the Illuminate Blast actually kind of goes against them, because that was uh, 7 denies, so you can see that was the first two creepers pretty much fully being denied, not a lot of experience going to these two heroes, we can see sentries being put down, they should be able to bring the sentry down, as uh, there's this little bit more hidden, they will eat it, which will be a little bit in trouble here as well, and he will be taken down, that is going to be the first but to Ikea, as the owner made, made a TP rotation, but a little bit too late to the party, and that's uh, that's not too fun. Um, the Cardinal dropped on his sentry ward, instantly lost it to the Ricky, as uh, that sentry ward is still in place. So two sentries being lost in this lane. They get first blood on the side of Ikea, and the Ricky is paying off already. The 
Ricky is definitely paying off mid lane. We do have the Queen of Pain being ahead of the Magnus as well as well. It's a Queen of Pain, you know. It's 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 a Queen of Pain versus a melee hero. You can just spam your shadow strike. Boxy is not going to have too much fun in this lane matchup. So IKEA is having fun in that situation as well. The Sanking is only jungling, so the Anti Mage is you know alone in this lane level three. The Sanking will start moving into the lane now though as. He has some boots available, he's level 2, and well, with the end mage being solo, there's not really any purpose in you not going to the lane, you might as well just go in there and get as much as you can, even though the end mage is already at the point where laning against him is actually not that, not, not that fun anymore. Just having fun, you know, draining the Sanking completely off mana. There's no mango or anything like that available on the Sanking either. But when he's zero mana, he doesn't take too much damage anymore, so he should be able to get a little bit more uh, leeched experience. The Ricky is down here in the bottom lane as well, but I don't know how much you can do on this guy other than just maybe hitting the Antimate a couple of times. The Arm Knight is sitting here, still haven't used the skill point. Does skill up the purification. They could go for some kind of blink play where Nox blinks on top of the Sanking, he hits him, then gets purification healed, but. Looks like the Sanking is going to back himself up, he doesn't want to be part of any of that funny stuff. So you'll back up, buy some mangoes, stout shield, you know, just early game items. It's always a good idea to have a mango in an anti mage lane just because you're gonna spend most of the time with zero mana, but you do want to have your bar strike available for like emergencies and for aggressive purposes. Do a Boxy being scouted out by Steph Star as well. Okay, Boxy, see, he knows that there's a little Ricky around him, so he will just go for the, uh, the the little small skewer play so he can make sure he picks up the rune, and it doesn't matter too much. Not that expensive a spell, and it's, uh, you know, cooldown is back up again in 10 seconds, so nice little small play by uh, Boxy securing the rune. Alright, so all in all, we do see that Ikea does have a 1000 net worth lead and a 500 experience lead. Pretty much all of the lanes going fairly well. The Sand King is also doing better than the Clockwork, so yeah, all in all, it is definitely in favor of Ikea right now. The Antimate is getting free from the Jug, is getting slightly contested, but um, it's, you know, we're talking about Seven Last, so definitely something that friends can pick up on. Um, the Clockwork is so far alone against him in this lane. He's level 4 versus the level 5 Juggernaut, I believe, yeah, so um, we'll see. And the Keep of the Light is also just moving about now, level 3, not having too much fun actually, but um, you could jungle on this guy, you could also just, you know, go to some other lanes, maybe go to the bottom lane and try and push that in. I'm not really too sure what you want to do in this situation, because going to the top lane whenever there are three people with that Ricky is not too much fun, and oh, Butch gets jump down, and that is going to be very, very painful slapping with that Shadow Strike, the double damage, Ricky hitting a couple of times. We talked about that one armor keep of the light, and definitely that is always going to be a very easy hero to kill. So uh, another time they find that little pick off on the side of Ikea. So there we have it, that's the purpose of the Ricky, follow around the, the Keep of the Light and kill her repeatedly, as Ricky is normally one of those heroes that you really don't do a lot early game. Um, your damage output is like mediocre at best, um, and that's why we talked about having that Darkseid available, but definitely the one hero he can do damage to is the Keep of the Light just due to the fact that this is not, the, not a hero that survives that well. You have um, pretty low HP and you have one armor so you do take a lot of damage from that Ricky like the Alba Venom slash Reclix does do a lot of work. We do have this observer warp being taken away, just got placed a second ago by Steph style but sadly that is not going to be useful anymore and Book will go back to the top lane. Yeah, I like what Book is doing now, though. Um, he knows that he is he is like the one guy they want to kill. Like, Evil Corporation, they will always lose the Keep of the Light, if anything, because of the Ricky. That, that, that's like his purpose in the early game. Find find the Keep of the Light, kill the Keep of the Light. So he's uh, just sitting in the jungle for the time being. He can stack up a little bit and farm that slowly. Um, he can stack this one up if he wants to, but obviously going back to the lane right now, as we do have a little bit of an action coming out. Okay, lag spike coming out. We do have the Luminary Blast not hitting onto anything. Clorock did get taken down by Fence's Spin as well, so another kill going to the side of Ikea. 
Looks like I actually just uh, lost connection for like a second rip. Either way, either way, just a small lag spike. Small lag spike. All right, and what else is happening? So mid lane, Foxy's still not enjoying this lane too much. He's sitting on half the lasses of this Queen of Pain, and the Queen of Pain could even decide to go for a jump here. As Sonicway comes out, okay, that is going to be a nice little move there from the, the Omni Knight, using the Repel on Boxy, just making sure he does not get killed. So, well, very, very costly attempt from Boxy, but uh, from what's it called, Slatan, sorry, as a... Uh, Using the Sonic Wave, not getting the kill, but he did a lot of damage to both the Omni Knight as well as the Magnus. So, uh, despite having used his ultimate for that, it's like a two minute cooldown. You force the you force the Magnus out of the lane. It's like who cares, right? You know, you almost got a kill. Um, in most situations, you would probably get a kill. And now they know that there's both supports in the mid lane, so um, I think the Queen of Pain will be uh, will be okay with that. You know, you always want the kill, but. I don't think it matters too much. And on the bottom lane, they are trying to set up on the Antimate. They go in with the episode and they go for the smoke screens. will lift up in the air. And the Antimate should be taken down here as this is what they're trading off as. As you know, the Queen of Pain knowing that everyone is in the mid lane. And then they're like, okay guys, we'll make a big rotation to the bottom lane. We have the epicenter available on the Sanking and let's use it to get one big kill. So the Sonic Wave kind of functions as a, as a information to set up for this epicenter kill. And that is good. I always want to try and shut down that anti-mage in the lane, even though it's in most cases it's hard. But whenever they know where Omni Knight is, they they, they can they can make kills happen around on the map. This is why the Omni Knight is spending most of the time just you know sitting behind, hiding because they know that you know if, if they attack a lane without the Omni Knight's presence there, then they should be able to find kills. And now they're instantly trying to make a move into the mid lane. They saw the Omni Knight move down bottom, and if they can get a jump on Boxy, they could make something good happen. Book is sitting in the in the trees. He's hiding himself. Boxy will be jumped on. Alpi comes out. Barfrek comes out as well. Slatan is surviving for the time being. Does not have the skill of available. And he's taking a lot of time from that clockwork. Do the skill coming up from Boxy? He will maybe. No, he doesn't hit his little, uh, his little shark wave. He will be taken down as he's lifted up into the end. Brought back to the claws of Ikea as Ikea. They make a very, very big rotation to the mid lane. Four people send there. Also the same thing from the side of Evil Corporation. Very close to being an even trade-off as... That Shockwave not hitting onto slot, and that's that's unfortunate, especially because the Queen of Pain is worth a little bit more than the Magnus at this point, but you need to hit your spells, otherwise that's not going to happen. So another kill to the side of Ikea, nothing as a trade-off for Evil Corporation. The Keep of Light will continue to just be sitting in the top lane here, make sure the tower does not take too much damage, get some levels for himself, as it's a very slow game for this Keep of Light. It's, uh, well, overall for the side of Evil Corp, it's a very slow game, Flens. This may be thinking about getting a jump here. Oh, they do go in, they get a jump onto Book, and look at that damage again. Like, this is, this is like, unbearable to watch as uh, one armor hero. Doesn't really have any stats available, only has brown boots and slots, and he's, he's well found in this game. You know, yes, he's, uh, you have these um, double null talismans. You will, probably won't see them being upgraded into anything. It's very common just to see, you know, a few nulls being built in the laning stage because you can see that damage output he has. 100 damage per hit is quite a lot, especially when you have such a low amount of armor to block the hits. So uh, Slatan is having a good amount of fun. You know, last hits is, is beautiful and damage is good. Whoops, guys. It's, uh, don't worry about me. I'm, uh, I'm switching around for whatever reason on the OLAs. Uh, <laughs> Don't mind me. All right, let's take a look at the net worth right now. We're going to see the Queen of Pain and the Jug is both sitting ahead. The Antimate is slightly behind of these two people. Sanking, having a good amount of farm in his lane, should have a blink at a decent time. We'll need 700 more gold. And in the meantime, Evil Corporation, they have fallen behind in so many ways. Mid lane, we have Boxy sitting on half the net worth of the Queen of Pain. He is trying to just buy some simple Arcane like boots, whereas the Queen of Pain himself is like almost a... Uh, almost having enough gold for the oblivion stuff which is half the way towards that orchid you have treads available you have those couple of nulls you have the bottle now we so he can see a hookshot coming in into the mid lane setting up for that illuminate blast plans will just spin himself hit the hit, hit the cocks walk away from the cocks and they will be fine as the healing waters keeping them healthy so that is only going to force them away from the tower the tower will be denied as the evil corporation at least makes sure that IKEA does not get that uh, easy gold income. And then uh, let's see the other heroes. Also, Ricky getting well, he doesn't have too many levels, but 
Okay, I think that's that's okay. You know, he, he's had his impact in the early game, getting those um, set, what's it called, set up kills on the Cardinal as well as the Anti Mage. It also just feels like Evil Corporation's support is kind of lost on the map. Like you, you, like we saw that Keep of Light in the early game just being hunted down and killed everywhere. And then you know you, you you go woods instead and try and get something done there. Same thing for the Omni Knight. Like like you're moving around trying to keep everyone safe on every lane, but you just you just see IKEA. They keep trying. They keep moving around. They keep poking for kills, and most of the time they've managed to find a kill. And something you have the first kill actually happening from the side of Evil Corporation as they commit the RP they get a kill on the joke which is very very nice and finally you know they they, they set their own mark on the map as they, it was getting a little bit too much out of hand for the side of ikea 7.5 thousand net worth ahead and um, as you know when you keep getting kills and you're farming well on every single call then that this is what happens um but it's only one kill like evil corporation they still have a long way to go as this magnus is not having a lot of fun looks like it will probably just be a blink coming out next which is 1000 gold away in the meantime though the sand king you know we see a blink on him already at 13 minutes into the game with all of these setup items the juggernaut will have his uh, yasha up next he actually went for helm of the dominator which is a very interesting item coming out from the jug um we have seen like drows jugs sometimes lunas try and pick up this helm even though it's it's like a sort of awkward item um Usually you pick it up if you have other heroes that can that can benefit from it. Uh, then it's okay to pick it up on well whether it's just safely or not, often it doesn't really matter. But um, it gives decent stats. So think of it as a dragon lance, right? You you get those early stats that you want to be able to survive, and you get an aura benefit which is you know helping your teammates. And we have a queen of pain who's a decent right clicker. Um, in this game, a very good right clicker. You've seen how much damage this guy can do. And also uh, the Ricky, which at some point is going to transition into a proper right clicker. The key was on the bottom and they get picked off by a flame because you know. Walked in, popped this up. Okay, Omni Slash got a free kill there. And let's see. Rubik. Shockwave available as well. And this is this is high damage Rubik plays coming out as obviously there's a lot of nukes available on the side of Evil Corporation and this Rubik can do a lot of burst, burst damage when he steals something like 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 the Shockwave or the Illuminate. That's a, a good 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 level of burst damage that can come out. Nox is trying to push as much as he can. He does have his Vanguard available treads on top of that. And he is actually looking for a for Mantis all instantly. So maybe not even going for the battle for you at all. That's a, a very interesting decision for him. Obviously, you can get away with not having a battle for you because, well, you have a quote unquote battle for you from the Magnus, but normally you would still see the battle for you being built. So it's very interesting to see him actually completely skip that, that aspect. But. Uh, it may work out because it does give him an, a very early state where a much earlier state where he can fight properly. Dancing Dragon is going to leech a little bit. Maybe you can get Valley as the light. Okay, did they see him? No, he just blinked past him. Dancing Dragon is going to like sit here for a little while. He knows that there's a lot of heroes around him, so he doesn't want to show himself just yet. Does not want to show himself just yet. And bottom lane, everyone is moving in here from the side of Eel Corporation. They want to just secure the farm on the anti mage as an anti mage with empower, like him being behind of the jug and also behind of the Queen of Pain is not really what you want right now. So Evil Corporation, they have to keep securing the farm for the anti mage, make sure that he slowly gets to where he wants to be, and well, using the clockwork is going to be something they have to do soon. Um the keeper of the light needs to do something with his ult with his uh, Obviously the uh, spell burst and whatnot, but um, it's hard. It's hard. It's very difficult. Um, as you can see, IKEA. You know the Ricky's always hunting on the map. And okay, we see the Sanking charging up the seven percent and jumping onto the clockwork. And this is a lot of damage being done. They do have two rotations coming with the TPs, but it is going to be too late as the clockwork will be picked off. And that is going to be both supports coming in here. But like I said, too late. And that's the glory of the Ricky, you know, just scouting out those easy kills. That was the first time they used the blink as well. They most likely did see that he had the flame, but either way, Foxy goes in for initiation, gets the RP off, gets the jump on the Dancing Dragon, Dancing Dragon will steal the, the skewer from the Magnus, and he will actually skewer himself away, so that blink show from the Magnus almost getting a kill on a Rubik, but even a Rubik gets away, that's, uh, you know, that's painful, that's very painful. 
nice steal from Dancing Dragon as well, taking that skewer, um, and then just, you know, walk himself away. Alright. Slatan does have his um, Orchid available as well, which is a very, very good timing. Um, I imagine this game we're gonna see a right like Queen of Pain, which means that it's, you know, Orchid into BKB into um, Assault Crass is like the S4 slash G slash whatever like way of building the old school Queen of Pain where you start having a lot of right click damage you can see you even went for the plus damage and um, even as a right click although you most likely do go for the cooldown reduction because the level 25 skill points 70 percent life still is insane so we should see some uh, some fun come out from this uh, queen of pain he's having a good game so far and farm wise he's doing insanely well now having an aegis available as well it's uh, not going to stop here you can make some aggressive plays without having to care too much the Jerk is also almost uh, towards that Manta style. It most likely will be, well, you win Helm, then you go Manta style, then I guess. Hmm. I guess the Fusion Blade is always nice to have um, just for the purpose of taking away the Guardian Angel from the Omni Knight. Um, obviously, you cannot take away the Repel, but um, the Guardian Angel is still very, very annoying to deal with. And let's see Boxy, he is also an initiating heavy Magnus as he's going for four staff next. Um, blink four staff with a cane boost and all that stuff. So he's not going to be um, the big part of damage. It's going to be pretty much all hands on Nox as Nox is going to be all of the damage on the side of Evil Corporation. He does have his Jasher completed now, so he is doing a surprising amount of damage at this point. They go in, get the RP off onto the Juggernaut. They will try and bring him down, but no, the smoke screen. From the Ricky making sure that that ultimate did not come out from the Antimage, I don't think it would have been enough either. There wasn't too much mana being burned. This is the TP out from the Magnus. He will be lifted up into the air so the TP will not come through. And he will be taking down Guardian Angel actually stolen from the Rubik as well. As a, that is going to be a very, very nice steal. The steal didn't, well, the Guardian Angel did not keep the Magnus safe. And what what was a, an initiation from Evil Corporation now just, you know, turns around. It is Ikea getting the kill. They even get the Keep of the Light in the base, perhaps. Now this bad is surviving. The Clover goes in, pops the Cox as well, and yeah. They try to get a kill on the drug, almost succeeds doing so, but then it turns around and Ikea will be the ones getting a very, very big kill on the Magnus. Plus, they get a very nice steal from the Rubik, so they must be feeling very good now. You know, they have that Aegis still available. They have a very, very uh, amazing ultimate, which is going to block out a lot of the damage from the side of Evil Corporation. As like I talked about, like at this point, most of your damage is the anti-mage. So the Guardian Angel is going to make it quite difficult for Evil Corporation to get any kind of pick off. Dancing Dragon is also getting very close to his first big item, which will be the false staff. So, just, you know, mobility. Um, the Sand King does have a false staff as well, 1000 gold on top of that. So. It's a wealthy sanking, alacrity, a blade of alacrity on the Ricky as well, slowly transitioning into that right click. I'm a little bit surprised about the tranquil boots um, over face boots, but having tranquil boots is always nice in the way that, you know, if you take a little bit of damage, for example, if you tank a shockwave or something, tank an illuminate blast, then you don't have to go back to base every single time. You'll be able to heal that damage. This is just mean, man, finishing up that ancient stack. So, uh, Queen of Pain, Akinim set the now complete this well. That is going to be the second item you decide to go for. So, value, ultimate, so you can spam that all the time, and Orchid available, and all that good stuff. Akinim is a nice item when you're in a situation like this. It's like, it's an item that doesn't really give you much in terms of like one team fight, but it just means you can continuously go around and pick off people. Do the Rupik being found in the top lane as they do commit the RP to get a kill on him. And yeah, well, 
Evil Corporation, they do finally get their second play of the game. Net worth wise, we do see a almost 15,000 net worth even inside of IKEA, plus 10,000 10, in terms of experience. So, Evil Corporation, they have to keep on finding these small pickups, even if it's just a Rubik committing your RP for that and all that, well, it's fine, you need to get kills, you need to not lose heroes, that's, that's the main thing for the side of the Evil Corporation. They have lost a lot of towers, so that's kind of why they're so far behind, but the good thing is that there's not any more towers they can lose, like, outside of their base. Um, there's the shrines available, which is going to be a little bit more gold in the pockets of Ikea, but it's not going to get any worse than it is right now until they start losing racks. So if they can just, you know, weather the storm, try and find pick-off after pick-off for the next 10-ish minutes, they may be able to find their way back in the game as they do have some decent fighting gears. Obviously, the Omnite is always going to be a nice hero to have. Um, they just have to keep on farming on the Santa Mage, which he is, you know, he... he he has his mental style completed. The Vanguard is up and running, 1,000 gold on top of that. So once the bash is completed, it should be okay for the Antimage to do some work. Um, but there's still a way to go. He's only barely ahead of the Juggernaut. And the Magnus plus Clockwork, they are, they are, well, pretty pretty speedily falling behind. I imagine the Clockwork will be looking for a Midas as the next item just because you're this far behind and well you're not really like even if you you get some nice team fights it's, mo it's very un unlikely that evil corporation will be able to win in the next like 15 minutes so getting a Midas is going to be necessary on the Clockwork otherwise he's going to be a creep very very soon. And the Magnus, four stars playing probably shadow blade next so just you know continuously trying to go for those initiation plays and let's see four stuff done on the rubik with his urn as well the juggernaut does have his mantle style completed and the next item will be a scotty so this is like the the new popular item on juggernaut as a carry getting an early scotty good stats and definitely also good fighting power going for like manta into scotty into bat uh, butterfly so you sit on roughly around 2000 hp and you do a lot of damage. Scotty is always nice to have against Antimage as well because he relies heavily on hitting you a lot. So obviously, if you can slow him, uh, slow his attack speed mainly, then that's 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 a good thing. Queen of Pain next item will be a Lincoln Sphere. Hmm. Makes sense. Um, it's like you're you're so far ahead in this game that you don't really want to go for BKB. BKB is one of those items that if you're even or if you're behind, you will go for BKB because it, it's a little bit cheaper and it's, it's it like solves the issues that you have. But when you're ahead, you want to go for something a little bit more greedy so you can like, you know, you can fight better. And Lingen Sphere gives you good stats so you keep on scaling when it comes to right click damage. And obviously it solves this issue in the way that you don't have to deal with the mana void. They don't have that many single target spells either so it's not that easy for them to just pop the lingans like the only way they can do that is with the mana leak okay with the other clockwork being four star forward into the claws of ikea as he gets taken down in his in the front in the steps of his own base we have the animation in the meantime he didn't manage to bring down this tier 2 tail in the top lane and now he's back to defend this as they do not want to let this one go Obviously, there should be no reason to let this one go. The Sand King does have his uh, Trail Boots completed, so a very interesting purchase going for that after the Force, uh, Blink Force. But, you know, they know their heads, so buying greedy items is what's expected. We do have Magnus going in, getting the RP off, but he gets Silas instantly now. The Omnus Ash comes out, does a lot of damage to him. They do go for the Guardian Angel, but sadly, it's not going to be in time. RP got stolen by the Rubik. To show what he used the LP on there. I'm not, did he hit the end? It may, 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 may have happened, but my eyes did not catch that, guys. Buy back on the Magnus as well, so they've already fought something. But let's see if I can get out of this one. They've all taken so much damage, and Nox goes in, gets a very, very big mana void off as it takes down the Queen of Pain as well as the Ricky. And the Rubik will be taken down as a third target. So buying back the Magnus for this team fight is definitely going to be worth it. They keep their base safe, their tower is still well above half HP, and suddenly you give a triple kill to Magnus, uh, to, to Nox, sorry. So Magnus, you know, losing a little bit of gold, I don't think he minds too much. Like, he's an initiation here anyways at this point, so if, if, he, can, if he, he can lose a little bit of, of gold so Nox becomes a big fat boy, then he will be very happy doing so. Basher completed on the Anti-Mage now. He does have the full Abyssal on the way as well, I believe. Yep, yep indeed he does, so... Some more towers going that way. They should be able to take at least one more tower in this bottom lane if they commit for it. But they'll, they'll play it safe. They'll just back themselves up. And yeah, well, a pistol on the Anti-Mage. Next item should be something like a heart coming up. Maybe even the Scotty as... 
Scotty's usually a weird item to think about, but with the changes to like unique attack modifiers and whatnot, Scotty may actually not be that bad as an anti mage because you get good stats. Um, you have a lot of slots. You don't have to get the battle free up also. So in like the the standard anti mage build where you will see like treads, you will see Manta, you will see Basher, then Butterfly, um, and then like maybe like a heart or something like that. You you have like another slot available so you can get one more decent item. And because you don't have that battle fury, so Skadi would not be that unlikely. He will go for the battle fly first, which makes sense. Uh, definitely still a very, very nice item to get. Um, we'll see though, because it's always interesting to see when you don't have a battle fury in the end maze, like suddenly you have one slot that you need to fill up with something else. So I, I would imagine it could be like a Bloodthorn perhaps, or the Skadi. We'll see top lane. We do have it to go on the side here, but jump on RP comes out from the Magnus as well, and they will secure themselves another kill on that Sand King as. Well, this is the purpose of the Magnus. You saw he get kills for the anti mage, and it's actually working out. They are finding their way back in the game, and suddenly that net worth lead that was almost 15,000 to the side of IKEA is slowly dropping down below 10k again, and experience wise, there's not much of a lead anymore. The Omni Knight moving around, he is trying to get himself. Well, he bought a buckler, which is at this mo moment just a value buckler. You can upgrade into the mechanism at some point, but right now it's just a buckler. It's never bad to have a buckler though. Blink will be the next item he wants, so he can go for some Blink Guardian Angel plays. Obviously, you you want to stay back, but you also want to be able to get those uh, those uh, RP, what's it called, repels slash Guardian Angels off when you need to. The Ricky almost has his Diffusial Blade completed, about 100 gold off. The Queen of Pain will have that Link in Sphere 4. Actually, he decided to go for the BKB again, so... Makes sense. Like a second ago, you were super far ahead, so you know, Lingus here made sense, but now it's like, okay, well... Well, back to the drafting table, right, you know? We we, we took a pretty heavy hit losing that fight, gave the Antimage a lot of farm, so you, you want, rather want to be safe than sorry. So whenever Slatan is low mana, and they're taking some, uh, some, some kind of a heavy fight, then having the DKP will be very useful. Alright, and what else? The Jock is uh, almost where he wants to be with that Skadi as well, does have one ultimate orb complete, almost enough gold for another one, and you know, it's, it's slowly coming there, but the Antimage got so much farm in that fight, 3000 gold ahead of everyone else, we do see Stethal leading the charge, trying to find a jump onto Book, uh, onto Book, they will find him, they will jump in, Shadow Strike comes out, Duke comes out, Repel, Book will be fine for the time being, Illuminate Blast is being set up as well, and the Orc was used on the Antimage, he does not have to use anything to stop this though, RP comes out onto the German, the German trying to go up the cliff, did not work in his favor, he will be picked up with Ricky dra dropping down in the back lines as well, they're trying to chase for whatever more kills they can get. They've already gotten two, and this is going to be Ikea on the back lines, as that Juggernaut did what not want to go up those stairs, man. They already used the orchid, they already used the initiation, and well, with the Sanking not being in a position to help the Juggernaut, though, it's just going to be a very, very easy pickoff. So, nice big jump there, they take down the T1 on the mid lane, they will go back, they will go for the Roshan next, as they still have 20 seconds to go, so unless the Juggernaut buys back, this is going to be um, a Roshan going to the side of Evil Corporation, we'll see if they decide to do that. Meanwhile, bottom lane, we do have Sloth, and he knows that they're in the pit, so he's uh, doing as much damage as he can, he will TP himself back 10 seconds ago with that Jug, they go for the epicenter that from the Sanky, they go and get a nice new man bar, right? get a Sonic Wave as well, the Clover will be taking down Magnus dead, and we have the Antimage going in with his BKB being topped, and the Queen of Fame will be taken down as Nox goes in and man mows his way through, as that is going to be a 3 for 1 trade off though, will stop the Roshan from being taken, and Evil Corporation will have to back themselves up. Still a nice team fight from the side of Ikea. They get a nice, uh, nice combo off with the Sand King. Epicenter into three man Boros, Sonic Wave, they kill three people, they secure themselves the Roshan, so losing the uh, losing the Queen of Pain in that situation is fine, you know, um, when we value the kills, like the Queen of Pain versus Magnus Clockwork and whatnot, um, the Queen of Pain is worth a lot, but the trade-off is definitely still in their favor, they, they get that Aegis on the Juggernaut so he doesn't have to worry too much about the next fight, and uh, the Queen of Pain, you know, it's not like he committed for anything too heavy, you know, you use your Sonic Wave which is low cooldown because of your Axe, and you don't have a BKB yet so you can't even waste charges, the Antimage did pick up his own BKB like just before that fight happened, so very fortunate for him being able to just jump the Queen of Pain and uh, take him out of the picture instantly. 
And let's see, the Anti Mage will be moving towards a butterfly yet again. That's... Hmm. I'm kind of surprised about the BKB pickup, but it's like a very safe pickup. You get a little bit of uh, HP back your way, and you don't, you like, you never have to worry about anything anymore. Like having a BKB available with the Manta style, the Orchid is never going to be an issue. The Sand King shouldn't be an issue either, so. Uh... It's a very tanky anti-mage, and like I said, this this is like one of those anti-mage games where you have a free slot. Like you, you, he he didn't go for the battle free, so you do have that free slot available. You can use for any kind of well, I guess you can like you, you can see it as like an item that you wouldn't normally get in those anti-mage. No, because we see the in the mid lane being jumped on by Noxus again. He goes in, gets that abyssal stun off, hits a couple of times, and that mana void will be taking down that sanking as. This is kind of the story of Nox's life right now. He can kill anyone if he goes for that play, that combo play. Even even like the Queen of Pain. If you don't get the BKB off when he jumps, then hitting like two three hitting like two three times with himself as well as the illusions within that abyssal timer is most of the time going to be enough to kill him with a mana void. So very very painful here to play up against right now. Twenty thousand net worth on this anti mage. Five thousand ahead of the Queen of Pain as. You know, all hands on deck, all hands on Nox, as he is going to be the one that has to carry the game. The Magnus is slowly moving into some more useful items. Lotus All will be picked up by him, so he can take away the silence from himself, and from the Omni Knight or whoever else is getting silenced, as well as just, you know, the potential for Hex. They do know that uh, the Sanking is building into either Shiva or Hex, so having the Lotus Orb to pre already prepared for that is going to be nice. The Clockwork actually went for Blink as well, so uh, this is a very, very utility-heavy Clockwork. Still not really deciding on what to go for next. You could go for the Midas, but I guess I guess since he didn't go for the Midas, second item is very unlikely he'll go for it now, so maybe just uh, the Akinim's rush now. The Omnite will have his Blink up as well now, can buy whenever he wants to. The key with the light is closing into his Akinim set as well. He needs 200 more gold to finish it up, which is going to be a very, very nice upgrade for him. Having the blinding light available all the time is definitely going to be very useful against the Jug, um, as well as the Queen of Pain, because they do do a lot of record damage. We have the Queen of Pain being jumped on here now. We do have the RP available, and the RP will be used by Boxy. A little bit awkward around the trees, not being able to hit properly on the Queen of Pain, but, you know, they got another kill here. Again, Nox just finding those pickoffs. Here they need to pull themselves together now because they know that the anti mage is going to be able to kill every single one of your heroes like on the map if you get if he gets some alone time with them. So you need to start moving together with your heroes. You need to start moving as a team again because this is this is not going to get any easier. Uh, the magnus is going to start getting some more items. The anti mage still has a lot of slots to work with. So I don't think you want to continue just letting letting Nox fight you and farm and whatnot. Lotus up. Comes out, Nox goes in, gets an abyssal blade onto the dragon, and the dragon is taking a lot of damage here. Will Mantis start just trying to survive this guy? He will be hit again. Uses his spin, he's very low on mana. We do have another playing available. We'll have the mana boy coming out a little bit off the timing though, with that spin uh, still being up, so he doesn't take any damage from that. And let's see, okay, friends will survive. They don't want to pursue for the kill. They did get the Rick in the mid lane though, so evil corporation is still going to be very fine with the, with the trade they got. They didn't lose anyone and they got a kill. Also keeping in, 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 in mind that Book can make a Noxus life very very easy to live as you can just chakra him and then suddenly you have a, you know your double blink which is always nice to have. The Magnus trail boots completed on him now. I would imagine you have Lotus Hall, you have Blink, you have Force. Hmm probably something like a I don't know, do you go for like refresher now? Like Shadow Boy is always nice for the initiation things. Um but Hmm, I don't know. There's a lot of options. You can go for Shadow Blade if you want to make sure you can get a good RP off. But it's, it seems like they are always fine with just those like one man RP. RP the Queen of Pain, RP the Jerk or whatever. Get a quick kill and then, you know, just on to the next mission. So 
it's more likely for me that he goes for like something else, something that can help them in the team fights. Maybe pick up an assault crash for the, for the anti mage. Maybe pick up a Shiva scar to get some damage. Even like an orchid, just to be able to you know amplify the anti mage's damage a little bit in the team fights. And let's see what else. The Queen of Pain is looking for that Assault Crest finally, as he is now transitioning to that right click uh, role. He didn't have that Academus being picked up on top of your standard build, the Orchid BKB, but uh, you know, it was a good early game, so you could get away with getting that like extra, extra mid game item. Um, now, though, he definitely wants to be in the later stages of the game. The Juggernaut with that Scotty now, MKB being the next item he wants to go for as the. Butterfly needs to be respected by the anti mage. The anti mage does have enough gold to complete it, and the jug is still only halfway towards that MKB. So it, it, it still seems very much like Nox's life is going to be very easy for the time being. And uh, well, next item after the butterfly. This guy, they should be trying to get a kill on it. So Magnus goes up on him now. Makes sense as well. Deals with the Omni Slash, you don't have a diffusion blade on the joke, and it's unlikely that he wants to build one, so that goes up is going to be just, you know, your free getaway ticket from being killed by the joke. It's good against the Queen of Pain as he is transitioning for a right click as well. You do have the Diffu on the Ricky, so he can take the ghost up away, but it's still you like you know, forcing him to use charges and that is always going to be easy. You have the Lotus also to take away the slowest one. Let's see, Mac is taking a lot of damage here. He should be able to survive for the time being. Lotus Orb is available as well. Don't go for the RP onto the Ricky. Sadly, does not survive as the Fade Ball comes out from the back lines from the Rubik. But either way, he did do his mission. Secure a kill onto the Ricky. And the Queen of Pain has already been taken down by Nox. He's now looking for another kill onto Dancing Dragon. We'll go forward. The Glimmer Cave will keep Dancing Dragon alive for the time being. Double Blink coming out from the end. We're just trying to look for some something but sadly dancing dragon did juke himself in the right direction and the sand king is already well away from this area so the anti-mage again just you know getting kills after kills after kills as this guy is definitely unstoppable um <laughs> i don't know man it just feels like there's there's not one single hero that can survive against his anti-mage right now when he's empowered and you see him just go in abyssal manta hit a few times and mana void like that is going to be a kill on every single person that he tries to do that on i don't think there's anyone that can survive that right now and it doesn't feel like they are going to be able to survive anytime soon
like that assault crest is is going to be a very helpful thing to get, but it's not going to solve the issue because this anti mage does a s insane amount of damage. And you can see he is going for the Scotty next, so you know that free slot is going to pay off as well as he's going to get a lot of HP and a lot more damage his way. This is a very scary anti mage, guys. It feels like this is just like a, a game where the anti mage is going to be able to one man carry. Uh, like I talked about in the draft. Like draft wise, the only hero that that deals well, they actually don't really have a hero that that deals well with the anti mage. Like Ricky is decent because of the smoke screen, but none of the heroes really deal that well with the anti mage. Like sure, the Queen of Pain with the pure damage is nice, but I don't I don't really feel like they have good heroes against them. Like getting an Omni Slash off this game is pretty much going to be based off of a borrow strike hex into like a smoke screen from their ricky then they can get a value omni slash off but that is very very hard to secure and even if they get an omni slash off then the omni knight can come in he can save the day with his guardian angel um so i don't know man this, this is you know everyone keeping the anti-mage safe they do find that ricky there as the keep lot has finally picked up a gem so ricky scouting out and will be picked off then the Omni is sitting on 2,000 gold as well. Could buy a Vlad for the team. Would make sense. Like, you know, if this is a game where you just want to make sure Nox is having a good time, then buy a Vlad for him to make it a little bit easier. Would make it will probably be the thing that you really want to buy for his team. And um, the Cloric will keep himself back to the base, just you know, eating the juice and cocks or whatever, just to keep the base safe. He'll go in for the hook shot. He will fling himself away and you know, just waste a little bit of time for the Queen of Pain. The Aegis will not be picked up by the Anti Mage, so think about having an issue with him with the first life. The second life is going to be unbearable. You know, if if you can't kill him once, then how are you going to kill him twice, right? The Juggernaut is moving close towards his MKB. Does have enough money to complete it, but at this point, I guess having buyback is going to be very, very needed. So we'll see. As IKEA, like they're still moving around. It doesn't feel like they've been able to gather themselves fully, though. Like we haven't really seen a five-man commitment from the side of IKEA. We haven't seen an attempt for them to just like, okay, we'll jump with everything we have to try and kill the Anti Mage. Uh, it really doesn't feel like that's been happening. Okay, we do have Nox. Getting a little chakra on him, so he will be able to double blink. Will he find him though? Ooh, a little bit off the mark though, as the tanking will be able to get the TP back home. And the tanking is, you know, just scaling into some nice late game items. He does have that hex completed, and he is looking for a Shiva Scar next, I imagine, with that plate mail, so uh, tanking up as well. Hmm, all right, so Juggernaut, MKB. I'm wondering like, well, how do you survive as a Jug here? Like honestly, like getting something like a Lingen Sphere would probably be very good as the next item because I don't like, as a Jug here, they have so much damage from the anti -Mage that if you get the Abyssal off and start hitting a couple of times, you will die. So I kind of feel like to like you need to worry, like if you, if you can just stop that Abyssal from being used, then it gets a lot easier to survive. Uh, like at least you will get your spin off, you will get your Omni Slash on or whatever you have again in the base. Boxy being jumped very, very deep by IKEA, they do get a nice kill, and they should be able to bring down the Queen of the Light as well. Nox can take him back, recall into the fight. Starts on this thing, a lot of damage here as he's being followed down, and they should be able to find a kill on him, get the bash off from Nox, and indeed he will be taken down. They get the curry before dying though. Cox being used by the Clockwork, very, very nice use there, stopping the tanking from getting that TP off, and with no mana left, there's no way this guy will survive two people dead inside of IKEA. Again, buyback from Box. You're not really too sure if that was necessary this time, but yeah, meh. Better, better safe than sorry. You know, the, you know, you, you lost your hero. You're trying to secure the base. You're fighting back. Then it makes sense to just buy back, even though Nox is uh, much, mo much, much fine on his own. Like he, he doesn't have to get any help. And let's see, what are you doing uh, on the side of Evil Corporation now? They want to force out some kind of buyback. There's no buyback available on the Queen of Pain as he did buy out for his Assault Crest. And of all the things you could be looking for, he's actually going for Blade Mill as... This, this kind of explains the situation there. And like, you can't deal with... Like, there's no item you can get to survive 
the damage output from the anti-mage so unless you want to get something like a lingon sphere to block the abyssal blade then just making making anti the anti-mage's life hard when he's hitting people seems like the the go-to mission do with ricky playing himself away they do know that he's up here though as nox will be moving in the gem boy is going to be in position they do see staff style and they should be able to get a kill on him yeah i don't think this guy's going to survive and yeah, well, he uses his ultimate will survive for a couple more seconds. We'll blink away. But that's only going to give him a couple of seconds. Good. As he goes to the left, we have the CG coming out. And okay, we'll survive. Oh, that was close. It's very close. Hmm. All right, MKB done and dusted on the Juggernaut. He is looking for a butterfly himself with the next item. So, basically, the jug is like, okay, well, you know, just moving into the same old, same old standard uh, right-click carry jug. But I don't know, man. I don't think that's like e even if he's six slot. Okay, you know, you have a butterfly instead of the TP scroll, for example. Instead of the helm, you have to do. Well, what would you have there? I guess, I guess Abyssal Blade or something like that. Like, I don't feel like he's going to be able to in any way fight up against the Antimage. Like, his Antimage just have, you just have too much freedom. Um, like, late game carry Antimage is probably, is probably like top three of the strongest carries in the late game. And since one of your like quote unquote necessary items is no longer necessary with that battle free not being built, then you can just do so much more. Like that BKB, for example, is like a free slot ring. So we do see Nox taking a Sonic Ray to the face, but that only hurts him just a little bit. He will be healed up, he will be repelled, and he will work on that tier 3 towers. This is where nothing will stop him. There's a recent initiation going on to the Queen of Pain as Nox goes in. Gets the Abyssal Blade off, a couple of, hit, of hits off Mana Void, and that is a dead Queen of Pain. As, again, like that Assault Crest is only prolonging his life by uh, maybe like a second or something like that, as he's very, very easy to kill either way. We do have the anti being stunned up, everyone else keeping back home inside of Evil Corporation. The anti the only one being step stopped in position, but it's just. Yeah, well. Nothing to worry about guys, the Antimage will be fine. Um, he now has the Scotty completed as well. Yeah, well, he did have the Scotty before, but you know, he now decides to put, put the Scotty into the slot because the Aegis ran out. So, 3000 HP Antimage, he's level 25, does have his 25 agility um, put up. 15% evasion, so, well, I guess the evasion is not like, it's not like additive from the butterfly, so it's like, probably like roughly around like 40 something, 43% evasion or something like that. Um, but still a lot of evasion, a lot of damage, a lot of HP. Um, you have the Omni Knight's way to keep you, you alive and etc etc. He's actually looking for Hex himself as just buying a very very big late game item that's going to be able to make Nox's life a little bit easier. The Magnus is trying to get a refresh up as well, makes sense. Um, at this point it's like you have enough items to keep yourself and the Antimage safe with the Lotus Orb, the Ghost Set and whatnot. So you just want to be able to use RP to, to, make, to, to make him able to hit whoever um, every single time. Keep it alive with the Glimmer Cave completed as well. Clockwork does have a Lotus Orb himself. So they two, do have two Lotus Orbs on the side of um, Evil Corporation. We do see Stas on the back. Line. Do we see the Hookshot coming out onto the Sand King? The Sand King will be kept in control of the Sand King. BKB will be popped by the Antimage. I think the Lotus Orb actually reflecting the Abyssal Sun back. But then uh, the Sand King should be taken down either way. The Omni with that Guardian Angel comes out. RP got sold by the Rubik. Is he able to do anything though? And uh, okay, I think he used it on someone. I'm not really too sure who though. Omni Knight did get taken down now with the Omni Slice from the Dragon. They should be able to bring down the Magnus as well, and indeed they will with the Stolen Guardian Angel. So many good steals from the side of the Rubik. Just uh, getting everything good stolen. We do see the Android maybe finally dropping down as he's fighting up against them, but sadly that is not going to be enough this time as finally they bring down the Anti Mage. The Unkillable gets killed, but how much did you have to commit for that? Like, Sanky had to buy it back for that. They killed the Magnus, they killed the Omni. Like, there's still so many good spells on the Rubik as well. Managing to use the Guardian Angel, managing to steal the RP. Now the Clawwing needs to get himself out of here. He does have his hookshot available. We'll go for the hookshot onto the Juggernaut. Maybe actually be able to kill him here. Flans is very, very low HP and he's trying to survive here in the Cogs, but 
This is scary. 70 HP and the yeah, second. Oh, he will be taking out the cogs, actually pushing him back. As he gets out of the cogs, he gets pushed back. But uh, that was going to be a death no matter what, because if he was in the cogs, he would have been hit by the Illuminate. So that is going to be a 4 for 4 trade off, and that must be barely worth it, actually. Like, I actually think that's still favorable for the side of Evil Corporation, as scary as that may think, because the Anti-Mage is the only one with, like, incredible thumb on the, side of e on the side of Evil Corporation, so, like, if they trade evenly, which they did, then, uh, well, yeah, they trade evenly, and I believe it's, like, a 4, it's actually a 5 for 4, because they bought back the Sand King as well, so a lot of net worth being expended by IKEA, they get the Anti-Mage, but, like, everyone on the side of Evil Corporation is slightly poor, like, the Clockwork, the Coddle, the Omnite, they're all behind of their counterparts from IKEA, so them getting a little bit of gold in this fight is uh, very nice, we do see Book being gone on by the Ricky here, should be taking down Glimmerke, being a little bit annoying, buying him some time, we get the future, and again, we do have the Omnite in the background, trying to keep him alive, we'll heal him up, the Repel is available in three more seconds, and Book, does he manage to survive? No, he will not, the gem will be put on the ground, as I will be able to take that. We do have the armor now being gone as they knew that he was lingering, trying to help as much as possible, and he will be taken down as well. That is two nice pickups inside of IKEA. Finally, they do just you know go together as a fireman unit and they get some kills. The gem is still on the ground though, no one has actually picked it up, but I believe yes, that's all he will come back in and he will pick that up. guys so they finally managed to bring down the ant mage but even like look at how much that they had to do to kill him like they they had to pretty much kill the heroes keeping him alive the magnus and the omni knight um they had to buy back the sand king and then they could barely kill him like he was close to killing two people with him um so you need you need a lot to be able to kill this guy and he has six thousand gold as well available to him so what do you buy here he does have a moonshot already picked up so i guess you just buy all the gem like buy all the wars and whatnot for your team
Thank <laughs> you. 